Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Mary Beth. This is my home in Dallas, Texas. Come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, my name is Mary Beth Wagner, and we are in Dallas, Texas at my home. I live here with my husband and my three kids. I have uh, two senior twins, boy, girl, Will and Reese. And then I have a freshman daughter, Georgia, who just started high school. And then we also have two dogs who are not here currently because they're very loud and a kitty named Khaki. We bought this house in 2017. It was a 1989 house. It was sort of unassuming, a pink brick, a very traditional, had lots of molding. And we just fell in love with the location. Um, close to our kids' school, close to uh, Highland Park Village, which is a neighborhood village that has you know, your grocery store, a uh, movie theater. And we did full renovations, took it down pretty much to the studs, and it took about a year and moved in Christmas of, right before Christmas of 2018. Um, the home is, I would say, traditional, but a little transitional, no crown moldings. We took all of that down. We basically touched every inch of the house, added a couple bedrooms, renovated some spaces upstairs, reconfigured the kitchen, and just, we love it. It's an eclectic house, traditional with some modern elements. Um, I, I feel like my style is um, mainly, mainly eclectic. I love blue and um, love what I do. I always knew I wanted to be a designer since I was a little girl. My mom dragged me to antique stores all the time when I was little. Um, eventually, I became to uh, love it, and I was pretty much um, enamored with Ralph Lauren, so I would say he was my muse. Um, I loved going to the Ralph Lauren store as a little girl and going to the home department and walking around. and so. I did. I knew I wanted to be a designer from the beginning and ultimately my path led me here. Welcome to my entryway. It's uh, one of the focal points of the home. This was one of our biggest areas of renovation. We did all the openings without molding, um, which I think just lends itself to be a little bit more transitional. These Ming chairs are some of my favorite pieces that are in the entry. They've moved around to all of our homes, um, from all of our homes and uh, just love them. They've been recovered, but they just really are some of my favorite pieces and I love the way they look um, here in the entry. This art is some of my favorite and I, I guess, um, inherited it because one of my clients moved and didn't have a place for it and I had fallen in love with it. And so I stuck it in my entry and here it is. Um, this piece has again moved with us and it's one of my favorites. It's by a designer here in Dallas, Jean Showers. And uh, the color and the scallop detail just really um, is one of my favorites. Here in the entry also is one of my favorite places, the powder bath. It's tucked away and I consider it a jewel box. It's covered in wallpaper by Farrick Mason. It's called Good Fortune and it just makes me happy. It's one of my favorite things and um, it seems like all of my clients love it too because we have repeated it in several clients homes as well. In the entry we decided to do stone floors. We ran the floors all the way through the family room just to break up the hardwood. I just thought that um, I've always loved big stone floors and it just felt, it gave it a little bit of a formality, but it's not super formal and it just gives the house a little bit of interest, especially in the entryway since we removed all of the heavy, heavy columns, as I said earlier. Now we are in the dining room, one of my favorite spaces. 
Um, I have had this table uh, from, I guess, for about 10 years. We had another house that had a rather large dining room and I was very excited that it also fit in this house. Um, I grew up with glass top dining tables. My mother still has it. And I just think they are easy to clean. They're pretty. Um, they go with everything. So that's one of my favorite features in the dining room. I did a grass cloth by Lindsay Cowles. These are my favorite colors. I'm peach, pink, blue. It's like I'm an Easter egg <laughs> dressed like Lynn today. Uh, it's one of my favorite papers. I've lived here for five years and still have not tired of it at all. This rug is semi new. Um, I saw it in a showroom and immediately decided I needed to have a rug, a new rug, but thought about it for about six months and it was still there. And so here it is in my dining room and I love it because it just pulls in all the colors and is, I would say, eclectic, a little a little unique um, and a little informal, which I like. The um, chairs I covered in cowhide, which um, I was purchased from a company out of Austin called Kyle Bunting. And again, I love a dining room and I love that this does feel formal, but the cowhide brings it down a notch. It's interesting, it's casual, and it's easy to clean, um, which is good. I want to mention this artist, Amy Berlin, she's a local Dallas mom that is super talented and during COVID decided to um, put on her uh, creative brain and she started painting and doing all of these incredible art um, pieces. And I had been looking for kind of the perfect thing since this wallpaper is so busy. Um, it was hard for me to decide what kind of art, but I definitely felt like I needed something. And when I saw her work in the first Kipps Bay Dallas show house, um, I decided that she was the perfect artist to, um, to hang on these walls. So she commissioned, or I commissioned uh, these pieces and I just, I love them. They really, um, I feel like finished off the space. I um, love shells, shells and the beach. Uh, I collect shells. And this is a piece of cup coral that has traveled lots of places with me. Um, I think it's been with me for probably 12 to 15 years. And I found it in a little random store uh, down off of Industrial in Dallas. And it's moved location within the house, but I, I, love, I love it here. Again, it's interesting, not super formal, um, but the piece that it's on is, is rather formal. So I just love the, the way it looks. My husband has a rather large family. I'm an only child, but he has three sisters. And so we do have all, everybody's here in Dallas. So we, we, do, we do eat here quite a bit. We have Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve. I love to do Mother's Day and brunch. So I, this is a perfect place for a large family and um, when we don't have enough or when the, the grandkids, a lot of the cousins, they all will eat in the kitchen or we use the card table in the living room. My husband actually found the home. Um, we came by, brought my builder, you know, brought a few um, architects, people by. The only hesitation I had was the upstairs playroom, which is off the kitchen um, over the garage was very complicated. It had interesting windows, <laughs> not a lot of light. Um, so we, that was the main concern as could we could reconfigure it to be the way we wanted it. And ultimately we were able to. So other than that, we knew we wanted it. Now let me take you to the living room. The living room is probably my favorite room in the house and it's had lots of, um, of evolution, I guess. It's evolved over the last five years. Um, most recently, I had the walls painted by Mary Mead Evans, who is out of Atlanta. Um, about a year ago, I put this grass cloth on the walls just to warm up the space. And then I was on a trip to Palm Beach with one of my friends and we went into 
a darling store there that had um, grass cloth on the walls and this a white mural, um, floral mural painted on it. Fell in love with it, of course, and then about a year later decided to do it. And so she um, just left not that long ago. And I just love the way it turned out. I think it's so unique and just added whimsy and femininity and I love it. So this room was quite a challenge for me. I couldn't decide how I wanted furniture to lay out. Um, you know, having windows all on this side of the living room and then this corner and a window here. I originally had a couch in front of the window, um, but nobody really ever sat in here. And then I added this banquette, which I thought was the perfect way to capture this corner, add some seating, um, balance the room with the card table, which I feel like every single one of my clients wants a game table for either mahjong, cards, puzzles. I wish I could play mahjong more, but I'm always at work. Uh, but more recently, I decided to put four chairs in the space, just thinking that this is a place where we, where we will come and enjoy a glass of wine, uh, hang out with friends. Um, so this is the new uh, floor plan uh, layout of the room. Usually this room is covered in my husband and my son's golf clubs, which I don't know why they like to put it in the formal living room, but that's where they usually are. I do feel like this mantle adds uh, a little bit of modern touches to this room where I feel like this room is primarily pretty traditional in design, but the mantle lines are more classic and modern. I have these tiny little vases. I saw them in a store and I just thought they were so darling. And again, my favorite colors. So I added these little, these little tiny, tiny vases just for interest. And I think they're adorable. These are fireballs that, um, again, are a little bit of a nod to the transitional um, part of the house that I'm trying to add in. And they are just really unique and they, they do add warmth. They do get really dirty, so you can tell they're, they get a lot of soot on them. But again, they're just, I love them. I think they're so, super unique and fun and just really added to the design of the mantle. So I definitely feel like the uh, design on the mural that we just recently had painted is whimsical, organic. I love, I love the floral. And again, I mentioned earlier in the dining room, Kyle Bunting is a designer um, out of Austin who does beautiful, beautiful rugs out of cowhide. And this particular pattern with its uh, geometric design I think is a nice juxtaposition with the whimsical uh, mural on the walls. So this Spoonbill painting is <laughs> totally random for me but I absolutely love birds and uh, this artist out of Fort Worth Natalie Irwin does a lot of uh, cattle and um, longhorns and I originally had thought I wanted a longhorn but then when I found um, this piece the Spoonbill, which just really is so unique and she's just so pretty and <laughs> I just love her. And I think it's definitely a conversation starter for this room. I love this vase. Um, it's from, her name's Tina Frey. It comes in all kinds of colors, but again, pink is one of my favorites. So the vase has been to photo shoots with us. Got, I've sold several to clients. And so it's, home has landed here and when I knew we were having this shoot I have this great floral designer at Avant Garden Michael Frazier and he just wowed me with this arrangement. Next we're going to be moving on into the study. This room was here but it was a wall and so when we were doing the renovation I felt like it was great to add pocket doors so that when we do entertain that you could open the doors and uh, people and conversation and just the general flow would be um, nice to have to transition into this room. I would say the majority of the time it's closed just because we watch TV in here and would like to keep it more private at night. Um, but this is the study and I love that it's an intimate space. We um, sit here all the time, watch 
lots and lots of shows in here. Um, my kids come in here. We all can chat and have um, just a good time. On the coffee table, I have my collection of sand dollars. I have lots and lots of collections of sand dollars um, at our beach house in Sea Island, but I wanted to bring a little bit of it here. And so that is what this is. I love collecting seashells. It's like the most therapeutic thing for me when I go on morning walks on the beach whenever we do get a chance to get to Sea Island. So that is what I have here. This is a burled wood round coffee table that is one of my favorite pieces. It just serves its purpose. It's a nice big coffee table. Um, this piece I have here has been with me since I think it was one of the very first pieces we purchased um, as a married couple and it's moved again around many times to lots of different places within all of our all of our homes. I decided to paint the study. It's uh, Kendall Charcoal by Benjamin Moore. I decided to keep it a dark color. It's matte. It's not high gloss, which is what I would typically, I think, do in most of my clients' homes. But I just wanted to try something different. As I said, blue and pink and pastels are some of my favorite colors. And so I wanted a little bit of a departure from that. And I feel like this gives this room just a cozy feel, even still with the lighter drapes. Um, it just you know, warms up the space and makes you want to come in here and either read a book or watch watch a show. I would say all of the built-ins are, uh, I don't like open shelving. I think it's hard to decorate. I think it's an expensive, you know, bookshelves that are open is can be very, very costly. And so when we did this room, I wanted to make sure everything was behind doors. That's where I feel like our parents have dropped off, you know, all of our baby books and our high school yearbooks and camp yearbooks and that's where all of that has gone to live. I would say what inspires me other than uh, other talented designers in, um, across the country but I love fabrics and textiles. I feel like they give me lots of inspiration so you know going to showrooms and seeing the latest fabrics and um, is really something that is, is where I get most of my inspiration. I think, you know, putting together uh, a mood board and seeing fabrics just in our office on our bulletin boards and just how, how my mind works of, oh, this looks good with this. And I think just fabrics and, and, and wallpaper just are my main inspiration of design. I have a favorite fabric line um, from Sewn Britain. I think they're based in England in London and I just absolutely love their fabrics. They create beautiful, beautiful textiles along with gorgeous furniture. Next, I want y'all to follow me into the kitchen, which was a big transformation. But first, we're gonna stop and you can take a sneak peek at my bar. It's small but mighty. We spend a lot of time mixing drinks, having wine. I decided to do white oak in this area just to warm up the space and I feel like it's a great transition from the kitchen. Some of my favorite glassware are these pink little Italian glasses that I got from one of my favorite stores here in Dallas, Ellis Hill. They are perfect for a little margarita, a little ranch water, but again, I love Pinot Noir, so I'll drink my wine out of these. My most recent purchase of stemware are these pink, a little bit of lavender, Estelle champagne flutes. Um, I just, I needed some champagne flutes for um, a party that we were having, and I fell in love with this color, so we need to pop the vu. We are now entering the kitchen, which is where we spend so much of our time. This uh, space was really different. It was green. There was a range right in the middle of the kitchen. This was a wall. Um, so we added the steel doors to go outside to what used to be just kind of a side yard that was full of gravel and really not used at all. And we use it as our entrance that goes in and out to uh, 
basically for the dogs, for my kids. It's probably the most used door in the house. The kitchen um, was all white uh, a couple years ago, and then I decided it really needed to be warmed up, and I used this faux wood wallpaper, and I just love the way it looks. It creates warmth, but it still feels very bright and airy. I rarely do any cooking, um, or what I do do is very, very basic, but my daughter is a very good little chef. Uh, she loves to cook pasta, and um, so I feel like the kitchen gets used a lot, but mainly by her. So one of my favorite parts about this kitchen um, is that we have a great space for a breakfast table where I feel like as much as we can when we do sit down for dinner with our takeout, um, we can all sit here, which is, is so nice because not everybody has this kind of a space, I feel like, for a breakfast table that's this close to the kitchen. This piece of art is by Erica Huddleston, and I discovered her work at um, a show house last year, and I just love the colors, the leaves. I just, it just really makes me happy. So I had a piece commissioned for this space, and it just brightens up the room. Some of my favorite light fixtures are these from Waterworks. I just fell in love with them, knew this is exactly what I wanted in this kitchen. They just are simple but elegant and I love the ribbed detailing. And then I don't feel like they fight with this Julie Neal plaster chandelier, which um, is one of my favorites. It just, again, has a little bit of femininity to it. We call this other little area the flex space because I didn't know what to do with it. So back here, we decided it needed to be decorated, but only just for really to look pretty because um, the, it's the entrance from the garage. So here I created a little sitting space where I feel like the kids come home after school. It's either backpacks or sometimes people are sitting here or my dogs are sitting here. I love a project. I loved doing this renovation. Um, I'm always trying to think of ways to, uh, I guess, create a project. So doing this renovation was really inspiring, challenging, um, and I would love to do it again. So of course, not my daughter would also love for us to do it again, but I think we're probably here to stay. Next, I'm gonna take you into the family room. We're walking through this space, which is the bar is on the other side. And I just wanna mention that this whole area where the bar is and the transition from the kitchen was a big head scratcher because originally we didn't have all these passageways. It was closed wall and then you had to walk through a very 80s style uh, utility closet slash mirrored bar wall. <laughs> so trying to come up with a transition from the kitchen to the family room was a little bit of a challenge, but with Chrissy Blumenfield, our architect's help, we came up with this bar, you know, that opens to the family room that is on the back side of the kitchen. So here we are in the family room, which is where we spend so much of our time. Uh, again, during this renovation, this room was black um, and very dark and lots of molding. And this, you know, is very, again, without the moldings, a transitional space. Uh, but very warm and cozy, but lots of light. One of my favorite artists is Thomas Hager. He um, does these beautiful marsh photographs, but he does this evidently historic photo process um, where, you know, it looks painted. But again, it's a photograph. I'm not totally sure of his step all the process but needless to say I love it we have a place in Sea Island and the marsh views are my favorite um, and so I wanted to bring a little bit of that view to our home here in Dallas so that is where um, the idea came from for this piece this room is cozy it's got a lot of seating and I feel like everybody moves around a ton you know I love to sit on the sofa the dogs 
a lot of time like to sit on the sofa too. But each chair is super comfortable and I do love having pairs of chairs as opposed to two sofas just because I feel like everybody likes to have their individual space. So that's uh, where that design came from. I feel like I change pillows often in this room. I think uh, we're a little hard on our pillows uh, with the dogs, the kids, and the constant fluffing. But again, this last go round, I you know, gained inspiration from the new painting or photograph. And uh, Robert Keim out of London is uh, another favorite. And this pattern is just one of my favorite patterns. It has a medallion on both sides, but they're both different. And so it's just such a happy print. We decided to create an opening with the bar just because we do so much entertaining um, football games and just different types of, of things, events for the kids, you know, parents. And so because this was such an awkward space before, having it open to the family room just, you know, opens the space up. It, you know, lends itself to when you do have um, a bartender or we're back there fixing drinks, you can hand it over to someone standing on the other side. These chairs by John Himmel are some of my very favorite pieces in the family room or really in this house. They're super comfortable. They're this rope detail. They add texture. I would consider it probably one of my signature uh, design tricks or pieces that I love to put in uh, all my clients' homes. I just think it's a conversation piece. It's comfortable. It also comes in an outdoor um, weave, so they're beautiful for outdoor patios um, and outdoor living spaces. One of the reasons I love the family room is because of its direct access to the covered patio in our backyard. I'll take you there now. Now we're coming outside to the covered patio. We did add this structure um, when we did the renovation. Uh, thinking back now, I wish we'd added uh, mosquito screens because here in Texas it does get quite hot and uh, lots of bugs. But this space is, is great. We can watch TV out here. We can eat. We have a, a pool. Um, and again, there's not a lot of time in Texas that you can sit outside, so our time is limited just because it's so, so warm here. But it, is, it does um, serve its purpose when we do have pool parties or we just want to come outside when the weather is, of course, you know, nice and not too hot. Um, I wish I had done fans, but I did not. I was inspired by these light fixtures that I saw in Birmingham that were made out of copper tubing. And so I had them um, manufactured here in, in Dallas and installed them. But they are cool and look interesting, but they don't give off any, any breeze. So they might be on their way out and being replaced with fans. We decided to add skylights um, out here on the covered patio just to, again, allow the natural light to not be too dark um, when we're sitting out here. And it's a nice touch. I think what makes a home come alive are the people that live in it. Um, I think you want it to feel warm, welcoming, not something that uh, feels like a museum. Warm tones, textures, um, you know, clutter occasionally. Um, I think that gives the home a soul. Animals, of course, always. Let's head upstairs and I'll show you some of the bedrooms. We are now entering the primary suite. This was quite the renovation um, five years ago. The space had a porch off of it that had three sets of French doors and we did not ever want to go and sit out on a porch looking at our neighbors since we all live fairly close together here in Dallas. So we enclosed the, the porch and made a primary sitting room and then created my son's room which is on the opposite wall of this space there because it had French doors there were windows at the time and so we added the windows on either side of the bed for uh, natural light and again the big window at the back of the sitting room 
there were his and hers bathrooms, so we enclosed and just made one, one primary bath. I love pastels, so um, no surprise here that I have kind of a pretty feminine pastel bedroom, which my husband is, is okay with. Um, love, love Katie Ritter, love the pattern on the headboard, um, and again, love this, this piece at the end of the bed. It's Serena and Lily. I just love that it's unique, it's rattan, and it has two chairs. It's a nice place to sit, or really my dogs like to sit on it. Um, chair that, an ottoman that I've had for probably 15 years. It's now covered in a new fabric, finally. Um, but we just, we love it. It's a great big space. It's actually not as big as it was before, um, if you can believe it, but it's, it's nice. We, we enjoy it, and I love the, all the natural light. So I love this artist, Ariane Leprec. She um, does beautiful, beautiful pieces. And when I was laying in bed looking at these walls, I just felt like there needed to be some kind of a balance. I had other pieces there at one point, things that were mismatched, and I just was unhappy, unhappy with it when, when I'd lay in bed. And so I follow her work, and she does these great big panels. And I thought, oh, that would be the perfect thing to frame the door and took kind of a chance on it since they're pretty bold and kind of loud and wild. But um, again, love the organic uh, whimsy of it, um, nature inspired. So I just, I think that they work perfectly. So the sitting room was added basically because we didn't want to have uh, the outdoor porch. Um, and it's a great space if you want to you know come up here again watch tv i feel like my kids have come in here and watch shows one of my favorite uh pieces is are these wicker side tables from stone britain i mentioned earlier i love their textiles but i also love their furniture and i just think they make me happy they're unique i love the scalloped detail we have a pair I think they're great because they can go really anywhere in the house um, if we were to ever move. Due to the size of the massive window, we um, added this grass shade from Winsong. They, I love the texture. It, they're blackout, which is great, but the, the drapes are just so heavy that I just didn't feel like we could open and close them every night. And so this shade is perfect because I can raise and lower it super easy and it gives um, the effect of blackout, so it gets super dark in here. I love the way it flows. I love that we have three uh, living spaces downstairs where everybody, I feel like, can find a place, um, you know, to watch TV, watch a movie, hang out, uh, enter, you know, entertain. I feel like we have lots of spaces where people can spread out, and I think that's one of the things I love about this home. We are now in my youngest daughter's room, Georgia, uh, which recently had a transformation. Um, she's almost 15. I think she's taking after me. She loves design. And I took the girls to London and Paris this summer, and we went to a London show house. And in one of the bedrooms, they had a brass canopy hanging from the ceiling. So if you see here, I had it replicated. I thought it was the she really wanted a canopy, but I felt like the room wasn't that large, might, you know, overwhelm. But again, she's only going to be here for another four, four more years. And so I thought this was a great way to do a canopy bed without, um, you know, getting super heavy. And so we added this brass detail from the ceiling and added the light, um, lightweight fabric. For the curtains. Her bed had been existing but we just recovered it and I have a cute little story. Um, when I was in Paris for work a couple years ago I brought home my oldest daughter a scarf and had it framed and so when we went over there this year with my girls um, my youngest wanted one as well and so that was her souvenir and we had it framed and basically did the color palette around the scarf. My daughter had a very strong vision for this room. Uh, the wallpaper that was in here was very busy. 
and uh, hot pink and bubblegum pink and lavender and green. And um, she decided uh, or asked me if she could do something uh, a little bit more serene and she definitely wanted a pale blue grass cloth. And so I brought home several, several different grass cloths and several different fabrics and we collaborated and um, I think she did a good job. I would say most of it was, a, was, was her design. You know, they're, they're only teenagers once and so I, I'm not sure about these pillows, but this makes her really happy and I have to give in sometimes and let there be a uh, teen teen pieces throughout the house um, just like we have this uh, record player that is currently always playing Taylor Swift or Olivia Rodrigo. Georgia really wanted um, a chair that could seat you know you could curl up in uh, maybe have two friends sit on again you know it's a teen room I was trying to you know be conservative and I found this swivel double chair on Wayfair and then had it recovered in this adorable Isabel pink print, which had been in her room uh, before. And so I knew that we had to at least have this still work uh, when we were doing the new design of the room. And I think it's, it's the cutest, perfect little thing, place for girls to sit. Home for me is a place where you can feel just like, feel, be yourself, uh, feel comfortable, there's nothing better than coming home after a long day of work and just taking off your shoes and sitting in a room that is comfortable and that's, you know, laying around, <laughs> enjoying a cup of coffee or a glass of wine is really what home is for me. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.